Hey everyone, I'm the Canadian Lad, and today I'm gonna give you my honest opinion on Thor Love and Thunder and explain how this movie could have been so much better. Now I have to say it, there will be massive, massive spoilers as I'm about to tell you the entire premise of Thor Love and Thunder, so we have a better perspective. So if you haven't watched the film yet, please click away right now. But if you did, then let's get going without wasting any time. First and foremost, not enough screen time for Gore the God Butcher. That's right, even the people who love the film have this complaint. Christian Bale stole every scene that he's in, and he was the best part of the film as well. But there's no logical explanation as to why his screen time was cut so short. The way the movie opened by giving us a backstory as to how Gore became the God Butcher, that was really nicely done. And I for a moment thought if the movie's beginning with Bale, we might be in here for a treat. But I was so wrong, because we hardly saw any any butchering. Now some might say it's a romantic comedy and that's why the name Love and Thunder. But then why would you introduce a villain like Gore the God Butcher and completely waste him like that? I mean it's an irony that we have a location full of gods in this movie, aka the omnipotent city, and a villain literally called the God Butcher and there's no action scene with said God Butcher in said location. We should have gotten scenes where we visually see Gore butchering gods around the cosmos. Instead they decided to show us through a screen on the Banatar. Even though the shot we see on the screen has been taken directly from the comics, but we as an audience just can't quite connect to a story unless we've been shown what happened. The same goes with Felaga the Behemoth. Gore kills him but we never get to see how. And if you think about it, we literally have a god butcher as the primary antagonist but we see Thor killing more gods in this film. I mean on one hand we're not shown important action sequences and on the other we're constantly being spoon fed the plot to us. In simpler words, we are deprived from watching scenes that will leave an impact and make the audience go whoa. While at the same time being reminded of the plot to every 30 minutes. Now the second reason why I believe this movie lacked any real conviction is the Taikaism. Taika's writing style and way too much humor are sometimes his own worst enemy. It worked for Ragnarok because it was something so new and it was refreshing. Keep in mind Ragnarok was a major upgrade since Thor The Dark World, but Love and Thunder feels like Ragnarok dialed up to 11. It's not exactly an upgrade. I'll give you an example why Ragnarok was so good. When Hulk's smashes Thor the same way he smashed Loki back in the Avengers, Loki screams and says yes, that's how it feels. <laughs> I'm just a huge fan of this sport. Now this joke worked for every audience because this was in the making for almost 8 years. If you're not a fan of the MCU, you wouldn't get it. But if you are, you would surely laugh at this. The jokes in Ragnarok just landed way better than Love and Thunder. Thor Ragnarok was, uh, was a good film <laughs> and I felt it was going to be very hard to top that. Plus Taika Waititi admitted himself that he went and reshot this bit with Odin where he passes away in Ragnarok because the original scenes were so comedic that it took away all the right emotions we're supposed to feel. Originally, Loki and Thor were supposed to find Odin as a homeless person. There were lots of jokes and then Odin died. But Taika felt that scene didn't need any comedy in it, so he went and reshot it and gave Odin the ending he deserved. Not only does this scene have no comic relief, but it was toned down so much that it almost didn't feel like a Taika movie. But in Love and Thunder, almost every scene takes a comedic turn. I feel like there were genuine moments where Thor should have shown leadership and instead he gets passed off as an idiot. Yes, we shouldn't expect seriousness out of this film, but they still could have struck a better balance. You can be funny without making Thor a complete moron. I mean, you'd think that someone who went through so much pain and grief, who has been alive for so long, would finally learn to get serious at the right time. But no, he just doesn't. On one hand, Marvel wants us to sympathize with Wanda for losing her imaginary kids, but over here we're expected to laugh at Thor, who lost his actual family and his actual planet. I know people deal with pain in their own different ways. Some some deal with it like Wanda and some deal with it like Thor with humor. But I feel the Russo brothers and the writers Christopher Marcus and Stephen McFeely were able to completely balance this in Infinity War through this scene. So dead brother, huh? Well, he's been dead before. And you said you, your sister and your dad? Both dead. But still got a mom now? Killed by a dark elf. A best friend? Stabbed through the heart. You sure you're up to this particular murder mission? Absolutely. No rage and uh, vengeance, anger, loss, regret, they're all tremendous motivators. They really clear the mind, so I'm, I'm good to go. Well, he's the toughest there is. Well, he's never fought me. Yeah, he has. He's never fought me twice. 
This scene perfectly shows how Thor uses humor to cope up and hide his pain, making it obvious that he is sad, but at the same time laughing and smiling. I know Taika paved the road for this version of Thor in Ragnarok before Infinity War, and that's why I feel Taika should have done something different this time around, otherwise it all gets a bit repetitive. Now the third reason is the pacing of this film. I know it sounds very cliche at this point to say that a movie didn't have a good pace, but you really feel it with this one, don't you? There was practically no sense of urgency in the main characters, even when in a and lives were at stake. For example, Gore steals Stonebreaker from Thor, which he needs to open a portal in the heart of eternity. Now Thor, Jane and Valkyrie all know that if Gore reaches eternity, the entire universe will be at risk. And despite that, we literally see no sense of urgency from Thor, Jane and Valkyrie. They have normal conversations with jokes in between as if nothing's at stake. So doesn't that raise a question like how is Thor so calm despite losing the only weapon that Gore needs to fulfill his mission? So the pacing was really weird in this film. Now the fourth and the final reason why this movie just didn't work for me is the basic premise of the film. Take a look at what I said before Spider-Man No Way Home was released. I was warning the audience to not get ahead of themselves and not to be impressed by the cast alone, but to wait to see if the story is compelling or not. And thankfully, not only did they bring Toby and Andrew back, but they did justice to their characters. But in the case of Love and Thunder, the story didn't move me at all. Taika used the Jane Foster cancer storyline, which is one of the best storylines you could get from the source material and we still couldn't develop any authentic sympathy for Jane. And I think it's a failure from the writing department. And I don't want to say it, but I'm afraid the MCU might be getting a bit complacent. What's hurting Phase 4 the most are the scripts. With a few exceptions like Spider-Man No Way Home, Shang-Chi, Moon Knight and Loki, nobody is putting any thought or effort into the scripts. There's fun ideas at play, but they don't go anywhere. For instance, the idea of Gore kidnapping a bunch of kids from the new Asgard is something very dark and unique. But if you follow Follow it up with an unnecessary joke, do the stakes feel genuine anymore? And the movie was barely 2 hours. So I ask, why not add at least 10 more minutes where we see more of Gore? Or perhaps 5 more minutes where Thor is super serious? Watching Gore not butchering gods at all is like watching an Iron Man film where the suit is made out of plastic. So these are all the reasons why I believe this movie couldn't really top Ragnarok. I love the MCU and Marvel with all my heart. I live for it. But I cannot say a story is good if it's not good. That would be lying to my audience. And I know how much of an effort I made to have you all watch my videos. So I have to be truthful to you lads. Plus, if we accept all sorts of stuff from our favorite franchise, even the bad stuff, what are the chances that they will improve? One of the best things about Marvel and Kevin Feige is that they listen to us, the audience. So we have got to raise our voice and demand much more compelling stories. Of course, not every movie has to be dark and make us think when it ends. But a movie can be delightful, full of laughs, but not at the expense of the leading characters. Character. And with that, I'll end today's video. My breakdown of Thor Love and Thunder comes next. I'll see you lads in that one. Okay, bye now. I really wanted this film to be different to Thor Ragnarok in... Did I? Did you? Why not, you stupid bastard? 